now we're going to address four myths of homeostasis. Uh, four myths uh, that I think are commonly uh, held. And, and the first myth is uh, that you basically make a mistake and then the body recognizes that mistake and, and fixes it. That's not the case. In most cases, the mistake never happens because most homeostatic adjustments are anticipatory. They prevent the mistake from ever happening, uh, from happening before, before it ever happens. So they anticipate the problem. So just to, to belabor this point just a touch, this is the difference between a, even the, a, a smart thermostat controlled heating system and the human nervous system. Let's say that, that the accepted range uh, in, the, in the heating system is about a degree centigrade degree and that you open the door on a cold day only when, this, uh, when it actually deviates outside of that acceptable range does the heat kick in. And then it passively dissipates, and um, it will the, the heat will only kick in after the temperature of the room uh, leaves the acceptable range. In contrast, the human nervous system can keep first of all can keep the temperature uh, well within a half of a centigrade, uh, even less than that. So we have a very tight control on our uh, core body temperature. And the, uh, if you go outside on a cold day, you never even deviate. Th this doesn't happen. The, co the, the, cold, the body temperature never changes. And that's because you get all these signals. You get signals from your eyes. You get signals, cognitive symbol signals, memory kicks in, and your skin is filled with all these temperature sensors. So you know that it's cold out there, and you prevent the change before it ever happens. So, Homeostatic systems, because the brain is smart, are anticipatory. The second myth is that homeostasis involve, is, is nothing without the hypothalamus. Well, yeah, the hypothalamus is extremely important. And this just shows you its mid-sagittal section. You already know this by now. Front, back, cerebellum, pons. And here we have the optic chiasm. And here is the, uh, is the hypothalamus, just this little area of brain. And it is very important, but in point of fact, the rest of the brain also engages in homeostasis. And without the rest of the brain, you wouldn't uh, be able to uh, e either effect or even uh, um, regulate uh, uh, the internal milieu as well as you do. So the spinal cord is extremely competent, brain stem is a competent, and the, and the cerebral cortex is very uh, important in, in driving uh, hypothalamic control. Okay, the third, uh, the third um, myth is related to the first one, which is that you're, you're looking for all these cues from outside, and that's what's going to drive you to do certain things. So when you um, when you go out into the hot environment, you start to sweat. But the the same homeostatic, the same behaviors, the same um, adjustments, uh, the same automatic adjustments that occur in response to external cues can also re uh, occur in response to internal cues. There are examples of that. Getting nervous and, and starting to sweat or getting um, embarrassed and blushing. So Vasodilation is a typical response to heat. It is also a response to, um, to embarrassment. But that embarrassment is not an external cue, it's an internal cue. Uh, and, and there are hormonal uh, signals as well. And these, these hypothalamic neurons are extremely sensitive to a number of substances that, uh, that enter the central nervous system. So internal cues can get you to the same place as external cues. And the final myth is that uh, homeostasis and autonomics are the same thing. They're not. The most obvious example of that is breathing. Breathing is, as you know, dependent on the skeletal muscle, on the, skeletal muscle the diaphragm. Uh, it's not an automatic, it's not a smooth muscle. It's a skeletal muscle. So in point of fact, um, if you take thermoregulation, and that is is uh, one of the first uh, um, functions that we're going to examine in some detail. Thermoregulation, there are all sorts of behaviors that are, are not um, smooth muscle, 
glands or cardiac muscle dependent. So huddling or splaying, uh, putting on a coat, that's a very cognitive uh, uh, um, action. Um, and so you, you would not have the homeostatic adjustment that you, uh, th that you want to accomplish without skeletal muscle. And I, I encourage you to watch this uh, YouTube um, video, which is of a cat watching a scene from Psycho. And what you see it are a, a completely integrated package of homeostatic reactions that accompany fear. So there's crouching and there's the, the eyes open wide. Not only do the eyes, the, so that's orbicularis oculi, a skeletal muscle, but also the pupils dilate. As you can see, the pupils dilate as the eyes open wide. Um, you can see the, 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 the cat making m movements um, in response. So it's a, it's a full uh, body response. And there's no way this cat does not have it. We don't have measure of this, but there's no way this cat does not have an elevated heart rate at the same time. So this is an integrated response that uses smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, um, glands, and skeletal muscle. And now we're going to look at uh, hormonal control from the pituitaries.